Hello again, witches, seekers, and friends, and welcome to the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, the show where we do a little ranting, raving, and wand waving. I'm your host, Paige, and together we are going to explore magic and spirituality, social justice, the psychic realm, and most importantly, what makes us laugh. Hello again, witches, and thank you for tuning in to episode 51 of the Fat Feminist Witch Podcast, Laugh Riot. Today I'm talking about laughter, joy, and humor, and the ways that it connects with our spirituality. I've got some fun spell and divination ideas that are sure to bring you back to your innocent days on the playground when we all practice magic and talk to ghosts (laughs) without really understanding it. And a good old-fashioned sketchy herb and magic rock. I'm very excited. I haven't done one of those in a while. To help you squeeze uh, every last ounce of fun out of these remaining weeks of summer. But first, I have a joke for y'all. So why shouldn't a witch ever ride their broom while angry? (laughs) Because you don't want to fly off the handle. (laughs) Don't worry. I have got a bunch of those gems spread out all throughout this episode. (laughs) So some of you may have noticed, uh, especially right now, I am a grade A cheese ball. I love cheesy jokes. I love to laugh. I love using humor to cheer up sad people, myself included. (laughs) Um, And someone's sense of humor for me can be an absolute deal breaker. Like in any kind of relationship, I can't even be friends with someone who has no sense of humor or has a sense of humor that just really doesn't work for me. And like a lot of other people who have issues with anxiety and depression, I have long perfected my humor coping mechanism (laughs) as a way to talk about, you know, all the scary things that I I was feeling without actually scaring anyone off or, you know, to totally deflect from having to share painful things at all, you know, sometimes. And I'm sure everyone who's ever made an inappropriate joke (laughs) in a time of stress because they were nervous can relate. We've all done it. All of us. So I didn't know it at the time, but my sense of humor and the things that I found funny, like would really change a lot when I started treating my mental illness and taking medication. And also when I started deepening my spirituality and using it for a lot of, you know, like self-exploration and work that I, like magical work that I do on myself, if that makes sense. So before I get right into it, there's a lot of controversy over what is fair game to make jokes about. And I'm not, that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm going (laughs) to, that's not what I'm talking about today. But if you are someone who likes very mean jokes at the expense of others, especially those who are, you know, already going through some shit, you might not love everything I'm going to share. You might not even like me personally. Um, But before you switch to another podcast, Ooh, which one is it? Write to me at fatfeministwitch at gmail.com and tell me which podcast you like better than mine. Consider why you might get defensive when your sense of humor is called into question. You might be exactly the kind of person who really needs to listen to this episode. And this is not a judgment, by the way. It's so not a judgment because, uh, like I said, my sense of humor changed. And before I began taking meds and going to therapy and all of that stuff, You know, I had a really mean and inappropriate sense of humor, like for a really long time. And I was not fully aware. (laughs) I was not fully aware of it. Um, At times, my sense of humor was kind of like dark or gory. And at other times, it was just like needlessly shocking or, or offensive. And a lot of it was not socially aware. It just, it wasn't, it was like the opposite of everything I am now, right? And at a certain point, I realized that even though, you know, I think I'm a nice person and I wanted to be a nice person, my sense of humor was not nice at all. (laughs) Not at all. And because I use humor so much because I make so many jokes, uh, it turns out I just looked like an asshole (laughs) 24-7. I was also, oh my God, I hate this. I was also very punchy. Like, you know, you tell a joke, you punch someone in the arm and, you you know, if someone makes a joke, you like slap them. And that's just lame. (laughs) That's, That's like just a total jerk move. And I'd love to say that this was just in my teens, because everyone's an asshole in their teens, but it wasn't. This continued into my 20s. Uh, and what I've learned is that people like me a lot more <laughs> when in 
instead of being loud and offensive, I developed a real personality. That seems to be like a thing that people like about me. So, <laughs> and I didn't realize I needed to do that. So that kind of sucks. Uh, but your sense of humor can point to areas of your life that aren't functioning properly or kind of illustrate something like this, that there is, there's a, a difference in the person that you present to the world this way that you're acting and the person that you are deep down in your soul. You know, and to put it in a way that seems obvious, you know, if you're not racist, why are you telling a racist joke? Why is that okay? Why are you comfortable hurting people of color with your racist joke? Uh, and why is it important that you call negative attention to yourself or create controversy, especially over something you don't actually believe in in the first place, right? You say you don't believe in it. <laughs> Likewise, you know, if you don't actually like a person or dislike a person, if you like somebody, why would you tell jokes about that person that are mean enough to genuinely hurt that person? That seems to not really match <laughs> with how you genuinely feel. And if this is something that you might have noticed about yourself, what this can point to is an imbalance in your solar plexus chakra. And I mean, it, it, there could actually be a lot of reasons. <laughs> Uh, like me, you could have been living with horrible depression for years and now your sense of humor is just dark and sad. <laughs> it happens, right? Uh, it could be that your sense of humor just didn't really evolve from when you were young and, you know, a little less mature. Or maybe your sense of humor didn't evolve with your value system. You know, there's a lot of reasons. But spiritually speaking, the solar plexus is the seat of your sense of humor. So this chakra is very, you know, it's it's sunny, it's happy, it's in charge of your self-worth, your confidence, your courage, um, your ideas about freedom and success, personal power, um, your sense of belonging and community and friendship. It's very associated with friendship. And your willingness to study and learn, your sense of curiosity, you know, how curious are you about the world? It's all of these things. It's also where we store our emotional memories. So the things we feel about the things we've been through in our lifetime. And these are all things that are tied to your sense of humor and what makes you smile and what makes you frown. So speaking of smiling and frowning, it's joke time. All right, friends. What do you call 13 witches in a hot tub? A self cleaning coven. <laughs> so chakras. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. I love it. <laughs> so our chakras are energy centers throughout the body that control different parts of our, our life and our personality and, you know, just different parts of us. I like to think of it as a really great color coding system for like <laughs> everything, you know, spirituality, your vision, any sort of psychic stuff, how you communicate, how you express yourself, uh, love and emotions and feelings, you know, your heart, your solar plexus is this entire concept of happiness and freedom. And then your feelings about sex and your body and physical stuff, physical sensation, physical pleasure. And finally, your sense of belonging in the world or the things that, you know, root you to your life. I just think that they are such a great system to color code those topics, right? They're all very thematic. I am such a Capricorn, but I dig that. That's, <laughs> that's genuinely why I find the, the chakra system to make so much sense. That, that really is it. It's just, it's just fantastic. It's brilliant. So, uh, thank you very much Hinduism for that because I, I adore it. So, sorry. <laughs> so when all of our chakras, the entire system all together is running smoothly, we say that our chakras are balanced. And when they're not, it could be just one that is running low or running too hot, or it could be multiple and the way they're interacting just isn't working out. So when your solar plexus is balanced, you have energy and willpower. You're better able to recognize success and you also have a healthy relationship with money. So you're not obsessed with money or you are not willing to sacrifice happiness for money. You feel confident and recognize your own strength a lot more. Uh, you don't need to start fights just to prove yourself either. You, you, you trust that your strength is there. 
Since this is the first of our emotional chakras, it governs our ability to take and give constructive criticism because there's a difference between constructive criticism and being mean, knocking someone down. Also, it can be really hard to take criticism. I'm so not good at it. It's something I work on all the time. Um, and a balanced solar plexus helps up, helps us feel less like we are being attacked in this, those moments and sees it more as an exchange. So a balanced solar plexus helps us be assertive when we need to be assertive versus passive or aggressive or passive aggressive, which I struggle with so much. I know so many passive aggressive people. I come from two very big families of passive aggressive people. Oh man, <laughs> this is something I've had to learn a lot about uh, through treatment and even in spiritual stuff. Like I, <laughs> I have to pay a lot of attention to it. So this chakra, like I said, is very associated with curiosity and with learning. So a healthy level of curiosity about the world around you and an ability to learn new things and apply them to your life is a hallmark of balance in this area. It's a very active and sunny chakra. So when it's balanced, you feel like moving or stretching and you enjoy dancing or games, playing, you know, you, you enjoy having fun, um, moving, feeling your blood pumping, all of that kind of stuff. Now, that doesn't have to mean that you're willing to work out all the time. <laughs> um, it basically, you know, to start somewhere at the lower end and work your way up <laughs> is to jump all the way. Could just mean that you are willing to move your body. You are willing to feel the sensations of your body to take care of your physical needs. The best part is that it's the seat of our happiness, joy, our playfulness, and our sense of humor. So when the energy is flowing in a balanced way, you'll have way less desire to be mean or rude, you know, just just for the heck of it. <laughs> like, just to make someone else feel shitty. When your solar plexus is all balanced and working in top form, I guess, you'll be spontaneous without taking dangerous or unnecessary risks. And you'll make jokes and you will laugh at things and you will see happiness in your everyday life. You know, something something will make you laugh or smile or be happy, you know, at least once a day. <laughs> so it's that, that primal, childlike, innocent joy. That's what lives there. And it's that place where all those big belly laughs come from, you know. I, I hope you guys know what I'm describing. <laughs> I hope you guys get it. So when the solar plexus is running hot, you could become, well, an asshole. You could be domineering, controlling, aggressive, and arrogant. This is when your desire to bring others down to your level comes in. So you'll make mean jokes, and you'll feel joy from hurting people on purpose, emotionally. Um, and if you had a healthy relationship with money, you know, it becomes all-consuming, and Money becomes more important than people in your life or their feelings, or even more important than your own feelings. Like I said, if you are doing something that you absolutely hate, that makes you feel horrible, but it's worth it for the money, you're, you're selling yourself short there. Rather than feeling confident and courageous, you know, all brave, you could feel like you constantly need to prove yourself, constantly need to prove that you're great, constantly need to prove that, you know, you are in control and macho. You know, this is when you think you know everything. This is also a, a, a kid thing, right? <laughs> I, I realize I'm like, I'm describing all of this hubris and I'm thinking of children. The solar plexus is very much associated with kids and who we were as kids. Uh, the difference with kids is that they don't know any better, but you should. <laughs> and if you have trouble knowing any better, it could be a solar plexus issue. And then physically, you could have a, a lot of excess energy. You could struggle with insomnia. You can't rest. You can't sit down. You're just restless all the time. And you could even go that all the way to the other spectrum of physical activity, right? And get to like a, a an exercise obsession to the point that it's causing damage on your body or it's hurting you or it's not fun. When there's not enough energy coming through the chakra, your self-esteem is low and your self-image is just not a very nice picture. Those mean jokes get turned 
on yourself. So, you know, there's a time and a place for humility and even, you know, self-deprecating joke. I make them all the time, but it can also go too far. And I used to make them a lot more when I was depressed than I do now. And I, I don't think those are not related. Those are definitely related. It was going too far. You might not care about money at all or be able to focus on your career or success or even define success. Uh, you could have a hard time. It governs our sense of belonging, right? And, and one of the factors of our sense of belonging is the place that we live, the job that we do, the family that we have. You can feel de- disconnected from all of those things. You might not find anything funny at all. Nothing will tickle your funny bone and you might not be able to laugh at all. And then you end up caring more about other people's feelings or of their perception of you than your own values. This is when you might make jokes that don't line up with who you are as a person, but that get you attention from other people. You could stop taking any risks entirely, never have spontaneous fun and just do things in the moment, never play, never run around, and you'll care way too much about looking cool. You know, you're very concerned with what people think. And what really sucks is the state of this chakra, your solar plexus, can also affect your ability to astrally project to yourself. <laughs> so without that sense of curiosity and a desire to learn new things and jump into something even though it's scary, we wouldn't care to astrally project anywhere, right? That's just... That's an exploratory type of magic. So to find out if your solar plexus is off balance, you could take a minute to analyze your sense of humor or what makes you laugh. You could even ask friends if you have a mean sense of humor and go from there. I actually did ask a few friends (laughs) if my sense of humor was mean. And a few of them were kind of honest, you know, like, well, you do like to like, you know, tease and you're kind of punchy and, you know, you make a lot of jokes about people and they're not always very nice. So (laughs) I get it. So sometimes you can have good friends that'll explain that stuff. You could visit an energy healer. So someone who practices Reiki and they can tell you about any issues in your chakra system and then also tell you how to work on that, right? They can do the healing and then also tell you ways that you can work with your chakras to get them to where they need to be. There are also um, ways that you can do this through divination. There are some great tarot spreads out there that help you check in with your chakras. Um, I love the tarot spreads from Emerald Lotus Divination. They put up just hundreds and hundreds of, well, I don't know if it's hundreds and hundreds now that I think about it. They put up a lot of tarot spreads that are totally free and they're they're really, really great. So I'm going to post a link in the description and on my website so that you guys can find that tarot spread if you want to check in with your solar plexus chakra. The reading I did, and I'm, I'm going to do another one actually because I, I did it with a different deck, but the reading I did definitely pointed to some ways that I am not allowing myself to have fun. You know, some restlessness, some extra anxiety, some taking stuff way too seriously. And I, I hadn't quite realized that I was doing that <laughs> until I I did this reading and I checked in with my solar plexus and I realized that I definitely had been snapping and I had been not happy with people. Uh, My sense of belonging was, I don't want to say it was gone, but I was isolating myself even more. So sometimes you don't always notice, but that that tarot spread really helped me out. Gave me some tips. (laughs) It told me what I can do. And uh, yeah, I found that super helpful. I love divination. So when it comes to balancing this chakra, you can do that in so many ways. You can do that by dancing and playing, going out in the sun. So there are individual yoga asanas. Those are the positions or poses that open up or balance individual chakras or your entire chakra system. And within a flow like a sun salutation, because it's so focused on that sunny energy that is present in the solar plexus, a lot of the individual asanas help balance and clear out your solar plexus. Helps you feel a little bit better. You could also include meditation with really sunny yellow crystals like citrine or amber or tiger's eye. Or just find reasons to laugh. 
Just find reasons to laugh. You could grab a funny book or put on a funny movie, go see a comedy show or your favorite non-mean stand-up comedian. <laughs> uh, you know, hang out with your funniest friend and let them just leave you in stitches. Laughing releases endorphins in our brain, just like exercise, which make us feel happy and, you know, they give us energy. It's also infectious. <laughs> Not only does it spread to the people around us, but it spreads throughout our whole body. You know, you don't, when you laugh really, really hard and you feel like something is just absolutely hysterical, you don't just feel it in your, your face or your smile or your head, not even just in your belly. You, you feel it all over your hands, your legs, everything. And afterwards, you got to calm yourself down. You got to breathe. That's what a real good belly laugh is. So speaking of... Let's have a little laugh right now. So why does Voldemort prefer Twitter to Facebook? Because he only wants followers and not friends. <laughs> Loser. <laughs> okay, and why do a witch and a cowboy make such a good couple? Because they share a passion for fancy hats and wild rides. <laughs> I'll admit that, that that Voldemort Twitter one really cracked me the heck up. Like, <laughs> it's such an awesome burn. <laughs> burn, Voldemort. <laughs> of course, you don't have to work with the chakra concept to work on any of these issues or work with any of these types of energy or include your sense of humor in your spiritual practice. There are tons of spells out there for courage and for self-love and energy, willpower, inspiration, learning and creativity. You know, there are so many great spells out there for that and more and more coming out all the time. In the tarot, the strength card usually features a lion and sometimes you'll see it being tamed. One of my favorites is in the Halloween tarot. It's, it's very much based on the rider weight, but what you see is a lion in a circus. And his lion tamer is there. She's got his mouth open, but you can see that she's checking one of his teeth because he's got a toothache. I love it. <laughs> so the lion appears on the card because it's a symbol of courage and bravery, as well as our more animal instincts. We're all animals, right? And, and sometimes we act on instinct, especially when something is wrong, and when we're scared. The strength card can illuminate how you act in moments like that and how you use that against or for others, your reaction. So if you want to do a tarot reading to look into any of these um, issues to do with your humor, your sense of humor, try using the strength card as a significator and the themes in your card in your favorite deck to ask some questions to figure things out. If you want to create spells that will help, you know, encourage you to explore happiness, encourage people in your home to feel happiness, to feel laughter, to feel safe making jokes in your home, you can work with bright yellow candles, which are usually the colors of happiness. Um, cinnamon and any sort of lemony incense have very, very happy and funny vibes. You can also try desert sage or sagebrush, which is associated with the coyote, right? The, that trickster energy. And that can bring on, you know, fits of giggles or just <laughs> a more happy and funny vibe. And some of the crystals that I mentioned earlier can also help encourage that around the house or in your magic. And don't forget that I have a really fun, sketchy herb and magic rock to share later in the episode. Don't forget. A really, really awesome way to incorporate laughter into your spell work is when you're doing any sort of cleansing of energy. Seriously. So sound can be used to clear energy. You know, we use bells or Tibetan singing bowls or drums. All of these clear out energy. You know, sound waves bounce off of everything. They hit every spot. And music has a very profound emotional effect on us. Normally, when we use sound for cleansing, we try to find a sound with a very good emotional association with us. Something that makes us feel good. Laughter is a sound that makes people feel good. 
So you can use the sound of laughter to clear energy in your house. So you, if you are buying a new home, come over with your friends and make sure you have fun in the house and that you're laughing in every room. You know, imbue that really positive, happy, fun, laughter energy all over the place. Try some of the incenses I mentioned. If you've had a problem at home, someone's been in your house that maybe wasn't so positive or there's been an illness for a while and the energy is just very, very down. You can try putting on something funny, you know, a funny movie, a funny album or whatever. You know, I have (laughs) album. Oh my God, I'm so old. I have a Steve Martin album on vinyl, right? And that is funny. And I'll put that on sometimes just to kind of lighten up the mood. You can do something like that. You can put on music that makes you happy, makes you laugh, brings up your energy, helps you bounce around from room to room with that really fun vibe, right? Sometimes I'll put on music that I loved as a kid. And some of that is just, you know, stuff on the radio. And some of that is like kid songs, man. (laughs) Kid songs. Uh, And those will just, you know, make me feel happy. They'll bring a happy vibe to the place. I can feel that energy bouncing around. And using laughter and clapping has become one of my like favorite ways of lightening the energy in my home. So another way our spirituality and our sense of humor come together is through the archetype of our inner child. And our inner child is really another way of talking about all of this energy that I've mentioned. But it's also influenced by our own actual personal experiences as kids, who we were as children, who we were allowed to be when we were kids, and, you know, some of our significant experiences. Some of these might not be happy memories, but there usually is at least one time in your life that you remember from this time and you allow yourself (laughs) to take a back seat to the inner child. You know, you let that inner child take the wheel. Maybe it's on your birthday or at a special holiday. You know, you are (laughs) innocently slightly greedy, (laughs) very innocent in it. And you are very self-centered, but again, in a, in a fun, innocent kind of way, you put yourself first and you put feeling good and pleasure at the top of your priority list. For me, I give my inner child free reign when it comes time for Halloween. Just It's just, as a kid, Halloween was the best, some of the best times my family ever had. We all loved Halloween and we all loved to laugh and be together and be silly for Halloween. We loved the silliness of Halloween. We decorated the house inside and out. We carved pumpkins. You know, we watched every Halloween special on TV. We made the costumes and we covered the front yard of fake tombstones and an entire bottle of ketchup to look like blood. (laughs) That was my favorite. My dad would put, you know, a spooky, like, dummy outside wearing a mask and some of his old clothes, like his work clothes. And he'd put it out, like, early in October so that all the kids in the neighborhood would get used to it. Then Halloween would actually come around. And he'd slip into the outfit and a mask and sit really still on the same bench where the dummy had been for like a month and sit really still until anyone got close. And then he would jump up and, of course, scare the shit out of kids and parents. (laughs) And it was always amazing. It was so funny because as soon as everyone realized what was up, you know, it was a big belly laugh that you could hear bouncing around to the entire neighborhood. And, you know, those kids always got extra candy. (laughs) And as an adult, I still decorate for Halloween in a lot of the same ways I did in the 90s. Like, I even buy decorations that are really retro styles that we had in the 90s. I find, like, party stuff, like cups and napkins and stuff at dollar stores that are basically identical to the cheesy crap that was popular in the 90s that we always bought for our Halloween parties. I still buy those. I decorate my porch and I hand out candy and I laugh my brains out at silly costumes or I wear a silly costume. Like one year I was a banana and I just, it was so cold and I was just out there dancing to cheesy banana songs, like including banana phone, (laughs) which you are now going to hear for the rest of the day, even if I don't sing it. And my dad still dresses up and he still acts, he still acts like a total child at Halloween time. He loves to dress as a clown because he's big and he's got a booming voice and it scares the crap out of people. 
whatever. <laughs> His inner child comes out too. But during Halloween, I feel just like I did then. You know, I feel these loving memories, these loving vibes. It's like I'm there. It's just just joy. You know, it's just innocent and silly and it's playful and it's awesome. And as much as I adore the spookiness of Halloween and of Samhain and of ghosts, that connection with the, the childlike fun and all of those happy childhood feelings and memories is really what makes Halloween my favorite holiday. And it always will be. You know, there's no stress with Halloween. Christmas is stressful. <laughs> you have to have money and I never do. So, ugh. Also, I want to apologize for bringing up Halloween already. <laughs> I know it's early, but I was in the pharmacy last week and they got a shipment of Halloween candy and I have just been like trying to stop myself from listening to like every day is Halloween by ministry or thriller. Like I'm just aching. I'm aching to get started. But Halloween is actually a really great example here because it's also about spookiness and magic and mystery that you can't ignore that part of Halloween. Kids are so open to magic and the unseen. I've seen kids who are definitely talking to ghosts, others who somehow know to leave like offerings in the garden for fairies or something like they leave little food there when you, you know, when you go to pick it up. No, you can't take that. It's for the fairies. It happens all the time. Kids are so weird and cool. Uh, <laughs> and I've met tons of kids who totally have psychic dreams like all the time. And not all of those kids are going to maintain that connection to these spiritual things throughout their entire lives. And all those kids could grow up to not believe in ghosts or fairies or any of that stuff. You know, it's totally possible. Connecting with our inner child can strengthen our connection to all of that you know, that wacky, magical, spiritual stuff that's all around us, that's all throughout the world, that we as adults don't always feel that we have access to in the same way that kids do. Kids also, they don't second guess all of that stuff. They don't sec their, second guess their psychic experiences. They don't wonder if they're crazy because they saw a ghost. Yep, I was talking to a ghost of a little girl who died here. Mom, no big deal. You know, and off they go, running towards the jungle gym. What? <laughs> what? But experience is everything. And absolutely anything is possible to kids. And connecting to your inner child opens that up to you. It helps you have a more open mind when it comes to spiritual stuff. So speaking of kids, I've got another awesome joke for y'all. Mildred comes in to see her roommate Ag Agatha crying hysterically. Oh my God, Agatha, what's wrong? <laughs> I just got back from the doctor and she said, I can't have kids. <laughs> oh, Agatha, Mildred said, I'm so sorry. But food allergies don't have to be the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, classic jokes about cannibalism. Classic. <laughs> So there are lots of ways to connect to, to work with, or to heal your inner child. Like I said, not all of those experiences are very positive. The best is by giving yourself permission to just have fun and feel joy and do something because it makes you feel good. Play a game, do something you loved as a kid and, you know, be open to the possibility of magic. And I have a tarot spread for this, of course, and I will be putting a link to that. But so far, my favorite magical source of info about this and, and working with this idea is in Jailbreaking the Goddess by Lazara Firefox Allen. She was the first author I interviewed on the show, which is great. Uh, and her book is absolutely fantastic. So in it, she redes redesigns the common threefold goddess archetype, you know, the maiden mother crone, and expands it to include you know, more points in our lives and a more inclusive approach to working with these different archetypes. And there are five instead of three. And the first is Famella, is a, you know, the divine child. And it features, you know, a lot of awesome journaling ex ex exercises that I found kind of intense, but really, really awesome. And one aspect of this 
very divine child is the trickster. <laughs> you know, the kid who cracks up playing peekaboo or when they outrun their mom in the park or when they win the game that they invented that was totally rigged in their favor. <laughs> Innocent, slightly self-centered joy. It's what kids are all about. Trickster gods don't always seem like such a cool idea, right? Because getting tricked is not always very pleasant. But, you know, going through changes is uncomfortable. <laughs> That's just the way it is. If it was comfortable, we wouldn't go through a change, right? We'd stay where we are. So the hallmark of the trickster god is that it's going to be challenging and it's going to be weird and it's going to be completely unexpected. But in the end, you will have learned a very valuable lesson about your behavior and about the kind of person you are and how you can move forward and have a better life. In exploring your inner child, your inner child is your trickster god, you know? <laughs> it's this, this funny and unexpected side of yourself that doesn't really work on logic, but works on instinct and emotion. So working this working with this archetype and working with your inner child and connecting to that energy can help you learn valuable lessons and can help you move forward, can help you identify the parts of yourself that are authentic to who you are, the parts of yourself that are real, that are working right, that present you in a good light, that make you feel good, that make you feel happy. So if you want to get started working with your inner child or helping yourself laugh a little bit, I have got a really, really fun, sketchy herb and magic rock for you guys to help you get started. So our sketchy herb is dandelion. And yes, I mean dandelion, the little weeds that grow in your front yard. And our stone is Dalmatian stone or Dalmatian jasper, as you hear it called sometimes. So I hope that by now we all know that dandelions are not some useless pest. I hope we all know that. Not only are they the first flowers that bees, you know, eat from when they first wake up in the spring, but like every part of the dandelion is usable and the roots can be made into tea. I eat dandelion leaves all the time in salads. Like if you buy a spring mix, there's dandelion leaves in there. And I used to pick them all the time for my bunny, right? He loved them. So dandelions are not some useless weed, and they have lots of really, really fun, magical uses. The one you're probably most familiar with is this amazing thing that every kid knows how to do, and none of us really knows who told us, but, you know, maybe it was fairies, <laughs> where you wish on a white dandelion that has the puffy seeds coming out, and you blow the seeds into the wind to, you know, put your wish out there. You could also blow on it and count the number of seeds that are left for very divinatory purposes. But blowing on these things and sending them out there was how you made wishes as a kid. And you can still do that, obviously, with dandelions now as an adult. You can also use those little seed pods in mojo bags or anything where you're trying to manifest things, where you're trying to make your wishes or your dreams come true. And when you're trying to connect to your own inner child. So the root of the dandelion can be made into a tea. This tea is really, really great for increasing psychic abilities. You know, it connects you to all of that scary, spooky, mysterious stuff that kids seem to have access to. That same tea as like a potion can be left beside your bed to call in positive spirits. So in that way, it helps with your sense of belonging and fun. You know, you can have fun talking to spirits. <laughs> and also, again, your connection to spirituality. So it can be used in wish spells, good luck spells, anything with communication with spirits. You can use it for cleansing and purification purposes. Dream magic because of that role as calling in spirits. And divination, like with the little seed pods. Dandelions associated with Jupiter and with the element of air. So it's, there's a lot about communication. And in addition to our white fluffy dandelion, when that dandelion is more yellow, 
not only is it a, it's the same color as your solar plexus and of the sun. It's got this very sunny and fiery energy, but not fiery in, not fiery in a dangerous way, fiery in the way that kids are fiery. (laughs) <laughs> fiery in the way that you're insistent and you're very innocent, but you've got your things to do. You know, God, mom, like, I got to get out there. We're playing. It's that kind of up. You can also use it to help with animal communication. Dandelion is very, very, it's very in tune with the earth. You know, it's, it's prolific. <laughs> it's everywhere. And it's a much larger part of our, you know, our general environment than I think we like to talk about because people consider it a weed. And it's a food source for tons of different kinds of animals, like even human beings can eat different parts of the dandelion. So it helps with animal communication. Though you will find that many herbs and crystals that are associated with your solar plexus and with fun and with joy and with laughter are also associated with animals (laughs) almost every time, like our magic rock, Dalmatian stone. So Dalmatian stone is sometimes called Dalmatian jasper. It's not a jasper, but that's okay. (laughs) What it is, is kind of a quartzy type crystal that has bits of other minerals or crystals in them. Usually it's black tourmaline. So it gives it this look like, like a Dalmatian. It's an off white color with black spots all over it. This is an awesome happiness and excitement and laughter stone. So it helps balance out your some of your lower chakras, including your sacral chakra and root, which are below the solar plexus, but also your earth star chakra. This is outside kind of the general system. It's one that's rooted down in the earth. So let's say your roots, your root chakra is your tether to the world, to the planet. The earth star is what the tether is tied to. (laughs) So All of those lower chakras are to do with our instinct, with our feelings about life, about survival, uh, our basic needs, and what makes us feel like we belong to the earth. It's associated with serious earth magic as well as some more airy concepts, which is why the zodiac sign most associated with Dalmatian stone or Dalmatian jasper is Virgo, because this is an earth sign that is ruled by Mercury. Now, if you look it up online, (laughs) as I did, you're going to find a lot of different, different (laughs) um, zodiac signs that could be associated with this stone. I didn't like any of them. Like I saw some stuff about, what was it? I saw a bunch about Gemini. I don't know. But the same ones that said, you know, it's an earth stone would say it's associated with Gemini. I was just going to say Virgo because that felt more right to me. (laughs) Not going to lie. And then I, of course, looked in the Complete Crystal Handbook by Cassandra Eason. It's my absolute favorite. And right there, it says associated with Virgo. Virgo is a very stable, very strong earthy sign that is ruled by Mercury, the trickster god of communication. So this stone has both of those energies. It's a very playful stone. It's all about bringing in happiness and causing laughter, working with your inner child and healing it. It's very grounding. It's very calming. Um, It's also associated with animal magic, especially Dalmatians and dogs, of course. It can even help for people who are afraid of dogs. They can use it as a talisman of protection and calm. Not only does it calm the people, but it calms the animals in its energy field. It gives energy for new ideas, new thoughts. Your curiosity expands. It's good at soothing children and banishing nightmares. The little black spots that you see through it are often black tourmaline, which is very, very protective. It clears out negative energy. It absorbs negative energy when you're holding it. And it just balances both sides of energy balances like yin and yang energy. It helps encourage joy and your sense of humor, laughter. It can help us with shadow work. So exploring inner parts of ourself and balancing lightness and darkness. That's really great if you have a lot of childhood issues that maybe weren't so positive, a lot of childhood experiences that weren't so positive. This can help you work with both of those types of energy. Dalmatian stone is really great for meditation 
and for deepening your spiritual practice. You know, it helps keep you calm, but it also opens you up to spiritual energy, much like dandelion. Both of them have these very, very earthy associations, but with this element of fun and freedom, curiosity and playfulness. And combined, you can use them to promote psychic powers or to work with your meditation, to cast wish spells and bring in good luck to help you manifest, to help you feel more confident. So those are your sketchy herb and your magic rock dandelion and Dalmatian stone. Both are fairly easy to get a hold of. Dalmatian stone or Dalmatian jasper is pretty common in New Age stores and all of them love it. I just... <laughs> When I worked in stores, every time we had J Dalmatian Jasper, people just loved it. They pick it up and there's an instant smile on their face. It makes them giggle. It makes them laugh. It makes them happy. I love any stone that makes you feel happy, giggly, calm, and love animals. That's, <laughs> that's everything I'm about, right? So before I say goodbye, before I get going, I'm going to share a few more of these jokes that I have left over <laughs> because I didn't get them throughout the episode. So... What did the witch use to groom her familiar? A cat, a comb. <laughs> Why did the medium call an Uber to get home from the seance? Because she'd had too much booze. <laughs> How does a witch know what time it is? They call the guardians of the watchtowers. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> uh, and finally, <laughs> what is Persephone's favorite guilty pleasure TV show? Hannah Montana, because she also knew what it was like to have the best of both worlds. <laughs> now, some of those jokes I did find online. And again, I will post links in the description. And some of those I wrote myself. Thank you very much. The Guardians of the Watchtowers one was definitely mine. <laughs> but it's because I read, <laughs> it's because I read an, a little article about the craft on Matt Oren's website. So <laughs> maybe I should attribute it to him as well. But I will put links in the description. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And if you want a great opportunity to stretch your funny bone and put some of this fun cosmic laughter magic into effect next week's moon in aquarius is an awesome time for that because aquarius is a very fun creative and thinking out of the box type of sign so that's exactly a week from now pay attention to that if you want to find out more about me and about the podcast you can do that at the fatfeministwitch.com you can also search me across social media by searching the fat feminist witch i'm on facebook instagram twitter pinterest you can find me in all those places if you want to support the show financially, you can do that by going to my website and clicking buy me a coffee for, to make us, you know, a one-time donation that you feel is right for you. Or you can join my private monthly membership group on Patreon at patreon.com slash the fat feminist witch. It's $10 a month. You get access to the private group. You get show notes for my episodes. We do regular live meetups. We have featured books that we read together. It's a really great place just to connect with other witches with similar values. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody. Thanks for listening and stay magical.